Now, reporter Jeff Proctor covers law enforcement and the courts for the Justice Project with the New Mexico in-depth folks. He stopped by this week to talk about his reporting with the Santa Fe New Mexican about how language and conflicts of interest can impact how cases against police officers are handled in the courts. Let's hear what he told producer Sarah Gustavus. Jeff Proctor, thanks for stopping by this week. Thanks for having me. It's good to be with you. A few months ago, a trial of two Albuquerque police officers involved in the shooting death of James Boyd ended in a hung jury. You reported for the Santa Fe New Mexican this week on some of the issues in there, not just about the James Boyd investigation into the officers, but how officers are investigated in shootings, how these things end up in court, and then what happens with language and culture. I want to start with this. Um, who investigates officers when they're involved in a shooting and there might be criminal charges? Mostly police departments investigate their own officers in New Mexico in shooting cases. That is the case with the Albuquerque Police Department, with New Mexico State Police. There's also um, a number of kind of smaller rural jurisdictions that have the state police conduct their investigations because they don't have the resources uh, to look into those kinds of things. But what we found is that there is this massive patchwork all over the state where everybody seems to kind of do it differently. Um, and that goes for both the investigations of the shootings and the reviews by the prosecutors in the 13 different uh, judicial districts around the state. So how do, yeah, how do we compare to other states? It's pretty common around the country that police investigate themselves. It's a relatively new conversation, um, strange as that is to get your mind around, that perhaps the police should not be investigating themselves. There have been a couple of places in the country that have tried different models. Wisconsin is trying a different model, and New York has started to embrace uh, a more independent body to look at these things. In the story you reported with Andrew Oxford, what did you find might change? What's possible? What's possible is to create an independent body that does both the investigation of the shooting and the review of that investigation to determine whether there should be criminal charges. The problem there, as with so many other things, is money. Um, figuring out a way to pay for uh, an independent body like that is a conversation that I think is going to be very difficult in New Mexico. But beyond money, who's qualified to investigate the police besides the police? Uh, there are a bunch of different kinds of investigators that you could hire. The Attorney General's office has qualified law enforcement investigators. Um, it, it, it's really not a, a, a rocket science kind of thing. It's somebody who's got law enforcement powers, who can read uh, an officer, a Miranda warning, and then do basic evidence collection and all of the other things that go along with a homicide investigation. You and Justin Horowath also looked at language used by officers in their reports. What do you think would surprise people if they heard about the language that's used to describe shootings? Well, the language is often what we found, and this was something that Justin and I noticed from covering the trial, and that's how we came to write that additional story, that, that the language is really antiseptic. It's not, um, it, it's kind of Orwellian in a way. Some of the things we found is that they don't refer to guns as guns. They call them systems or platforms, which had Justin and I both just kind of like taken aback uh, while watching this trial. And then conversely, when they were describing Mr. Boyd, who had these two pocket knives, they made those sound scarier than they were. They called them edged weapons. And the thing that really blew us away was the defense police practices expert, a guy named Ron McCarthy, who'd been a, a member of the nation's first SWAT team in Los Angeles. He was asked to describe what it would look like from an officer's perspective, shooting someone uh, through the, the scope on his rifle. And what he said was, it would look like the problem disappeared from the sight picture. Another way to say that would be the police officer shot the homeless man and he fell down. So those kinds of euphemisms and, and distancing type language um, really is kind of designed to de-emphasize a use of force. Whether that has an impact on a jury, it's, it's tough to say. I think that's an open question, but it was something we noticed throughout the trial. Another interesting thing was that in the James Boyd case, there was a special prosecutor, which was really unusual, and addressed some of the relationships between district attorneys and police departments that they're working with on other cases. And then when it comes to a police-involved shooting, um, they're working with the same people all over again. Do you think we could see more special prosecutors in the future? 
I think we could. Again, it's a money issue. Special prosecutors are expensive. In this case, it wasn't particularly expensive because Randy McGinn, the special prosecutor, decided to make a point and took $5,400 to handle this case. That's the amount of money that's paid to a contract public defender in a murder case, which is an outrageously low sum of money to defend someone in a murder case. But she was in a position to be able to do that. She has a successful uh, private practice doing civil rights and product liability, those kinds of things. Special prosecutors are uh, expensive if you're talking to somebody who would actually take the full amount um, to prosecute a case like that. What's next? We've already seen Attorney, uh, Attorney General Hector Baldetta said he's going to be looking into this with a committee. What are you going to be watching? We'll be watching the work of that committee. Um, they're supposed to take six months and survey 190 law enforcement agencies around the state to get a sense of how they investigate police shootings, how those investigations are reviewed, and see if it's worth coming up with something that's more uniform or potentially more independent from the system we have now. We will watch carefully the work of the committee and then scrutinize the report that comes out in six months. And do you think that the public wants more information about what's going on behind the scenes when, we, when it comes to police involved shootings in these cases? I think that's a really good question. I think the public does want more information. There were things about the Boyd case that worked really well. Um, that case was decided in terms of going to trial in a preliminary hearing with the lights on, not in a secret grand jury proceeding, so it was very transparent in that way. And then we had a three-week trial, again, very public with cameras in the courtroom and constant coverage. I think that part of the system worked in terms of do people in the community broadly want to see police officers prosecuted for on-duty shootings. I think that's a different question, and I tend to agree with what Randy McGinn told me was that this trial, this whole proceeding, made this community pretty uncomfortable. I think I agree with that. Um, at the same time, if, if a shooting does cross the line from negligence into criminal, we do need to have a system that's more uniform and more independent, that the community can trust that the process worked. Jeff, thanks so much for stopping by. We'll be checking in again with you in the future. Thanks for having me.